What's up, y'all? This is Aquarius Roberts back at it again on the Peace Dealer channel, bringing you your weekly forecast for the 26th, 27th. <laughs> Sorry, 27th through the 3rd. Uh, yeah, so 27th through the 3rd or 4th. I don't know, but 27th through the 3rd. We'll do that. We'll do that. Um, I'm pre I basically go off the bat. I don't uh, record, you know, rehearse, should I say. So I kind of keep everything natural. So I just appreciate the love and support, and we're going to keep bringing it in and bringing it straight at your neck. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the weekend. It was an awesome time, but here, uh, this is the interesting part. This is where it gets a little more interesting for all of us. So we just had an Earth Grand Trine just recently. Um, and so it kicked off, it, it, it kicked off the stability and motion, right? Because we headed into Virgo season. So now we're in Virgo season. So the sun is currently in Virgo, right? The sun is in Virgo in the 12th house of consciousness, of the higher consciousness, right? And uh, we are headed into becoming a Virgo, um, Virgo rising chart, but right now it is in Libra. Uh, so Libra is balancing, right? Balancing out. It's funny. Libra is the sign of balance, but they're never actually balanced. They always have to learn how to balance. It's the same for every sign. Like Scorpio is the sign of emotional integrity, but they tend to flip out a lot. So it's like the pros and cons of each sign. And it's funny because we're the sign of that, but it's the lessons that you got to learn. Remember, people, astrology is not for you to be content. Uh, astrology is for you to understand and grow in value, right? Uh, and be a better self, be a higher evolved self. So, you know, um, you people out there that are basically saying, I'm Venus and Scorpio. I'm just an obsessive lover. Nah, nah, you're supposed to learn how to be a stable lover and to not be obsessive. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm Venus and Libra. I'm just indecisive when it comes to love. No, you're supposed to learn how to make some decisions in love and know what you want because then you'll always be settling for less or whatever you just can accept. So with that being said, uh, everything is about progress. This is why we have progress astrology and draconics and stuff like that, because it's giving you different facades of yourself so that you can learn to grow and adapt and mature in society and within your soul growth so that you can evolve into another stage of being. It's the butterfly effect, right? So I'm glad you guys understand that. So let's move forward. So the theme right here for this week, um, as you see, uh, the ascendant is Libra. So this is all about balance and energy, right? Uh, the theme for this week is ba balance and energy. And so what type of energy? Energy according to love. Now, Venus is in Libra in the first house, right? And as you see, there is a square to Pluto in a fourth house of self, self love, self appreciation, self intimacy, self care, the home environment, how the environment in the home is working, right? Um, and so just going off of that right there, I, I really think it's, it's time to balance out how you assert yourself in the world, right? What what is give and take, balancing out give and take with others, right? Being grounded about it because the fourth house is Capricorn. And so uh, being grounded about give and take, being fair in your relationships. Um, maybe it could be that you're not giving somebody all that they deserve within a relationship. 
you know, or maybe somebody's not giving you all you deserve in a relationship, right? Emotionally. And that's not emotionally fulfilling for you. It doesn't make you feel good, right? And so it's time to balance these things out. Now, if you notice, Saturn is still retrograde uh, in the fourth house uh, in Capricorn, right? Uh, so this Saturn retrograde is all about looking within yourself about your negativity, how you're putting yourself out there to the world, how you're bossing up. If you're accepting responsibility for yourself, right? Self-worth, right? Self-dignity. Cancer is the most emotional sign. So are you being, are you giving yourself enough dignity within an emotional realm? You know what I mean? Are you expressing yourself to others? Are you holding yourself back within fear, right? Uh, Saturn retrograde is all about looking within those, those, um, those voices inside of your head that tell you that you're not good enough or that you're not capable enough. The things that you've been telling yourself all your life that has not produced results for you in your life those things are undercoming change now, right? And so Pluto is retrograde also in the fourth house, right? And so Pluto is about transformation. Transformation of what? It's in the fourth house of emotions. Capricorn is all about the grounded. It's all about being grounded, right? It's about being responsible. It's another asset of uh, Saturn, right? Saturn rules Capricorn. Uh, so, um, but what people don't talk about is that Saturn's second ruler is Uranus. So here's where it gets interesting because it seems that it's time, right? Because if you notice, Saturn has a beautiful trine to Uranus, which is now retrograde also. And Right now, this, this time, the Saturn energy is like breaking free. So Uranus retrograde, Uranus is retrograde right now. It actually went retrograde last week. Um, but Uranus retrograde, if you think Uranus is freeing you, right? It's freeing you from everyday life things. So here, it's retrograde. So now it's time for you to free yourself from within, right? So let's check out the lead up. The lead up was being aware, right? A couple of weeks ago was about being aware of things, right? Being aware of your negativities, being aware of where you're going wrong, being aware of who you got in your life that's not helping you out, right? So then boom, we move further. Um, it's about now that you're aware, it's time to clean out the gunk right? And so we had to clean out the gunk from what we were believing in or what we were attracting, right? And so Mars was retrograde during all this. So it was how you're getting angry at things, how you're working on things, you know, how you're using your, your sexual energy, you know, how you think about um, your activities that you do every day, how you're being resourceful to yourself, you know what I mean? Uh, when you do a project, what type of energy are you putting into it? Are you being stable? Are you being uh, committed? Are you dedicated to what you're trying to accomplish? Like, you know what I mean? So in, in, in your Kundalini energy, right? So thank God, Mars is direct now, which is uh, Scorpio's ruler in Aries. So Aries and Scorpio, you guys are really unleashing a dragon now. I'm happy for you guys. Um, and me, myself, I am a Scorpio with a stellium in the Aries first house. Uh, so life's back in motion now, right? The energy's coming back up. Your sexual abil ability, understanding. The Kundalini is rising within you. So it's time to become more balanced people. It's time to get your energy back. It's time to get that creative energy to get that sexual energy back. Don't be surprised if your prowess comes back, your sexuality, and now you don't want to be so introverted about things and you want to come out and express yourself more. But now, see, because Venus is in Libra, it's bringing this harmony, 
right? It's bringing this assertive harmony. So it's like Mars is not just coming in with a bang, like, hey, you know what I mean? Here I am. It's coming in slowly and surely in good energy, right? It's coming in in good energy, good flow, good understanding. So just to further this thing out, right, is uh, this beautiful trying to Uranus and Saturn, as I was talking about a little bit earlier. So Saturn is retrograde and so is Uranus. So Saturn is making you look within, right? The power within, your internal power, right? Uranus is now looking at your freedom within. What are you liberating yourself from that you've been holding on to for the longest? For the longest, right? Saturn things. Saturn things, how you blamed yourself, how you blamed others, right? This is changing. This is why Pluto has a square to Venus, right? Because it's love and transformation, right? Transformation and love, having trouble with that, having the conflict of looking at transformation and love, intensity and love intensity and love you know what i mean uh whether to be intense about what you want or to be compassionate about what you want right venus gives off this venus gives off this sense of chill right ah, it's okay this will come when the time comes you know uh we don't have to stress about this we'll get there when it gets there where pluto is more I want it now. I'm power. I need this. Give it to me. Give it to me straight. I need three shots. Boom. You know what I mean? Like, so Pluto is more intense where Libra is more chill, right? So you got intensity and chill coming out of each other in a conflict. So you don't know if to be intense about how to go about something, right? How to go about how you feel about things. So boom. Mercury, we're talking about how you go about how you feel about things, right? So we got to go to Mercury, right? The communication, how we're communicating in society, right? Mercury in the 11th house, communicating with society in a creative way, right? So, so being forceful, tactically forceful in your vocals, in your vocal, being forceful vocal, vocally, vocalizing right? How you vocalize to other people. Are you assertive enough? Are you compassionate? There's a fight between compassion and power, right? Should I take my, should I tell this person you're doing wrong? You need to get this right right now. Or should I say, hey, look, let's have a sit down. I think that we all can come together. Or can you put this both? Can you be assertive and also be understanding, right? Can you bring the blend of these? Keep, will you keep the conflict going or will you put a blend in these, right? Internally speaking, right? Because we're learning how to deal with the world outside of us, but you got to change your inner parts to be able to deal with the world outside of you, right? That's the important thing about this, tra these transits, is that it's cleaning out your internal closet. The sun is in Virgo, right? Virgo is about cleaning. It's about the time to clean up, and it's in the 12th house, right? Ceres, the harvest, is in the 12th house, 25 degrees, which is seven, which is a spiritual degree. The sun is four degrees, uh, currently four degrees in Virgo, right? For stability and structure, right? So your, your, your stability that you've been dealing with, it's time to give love and understanding to that right? It's cleaning out the closet. The sun is in the 12th house. The 12th house is the most compassionate house, right? And it's the house of giving. I wouldn't say it's the house of receiving. It's the house of giving, right? The sixth house, which is across that, is giving and receiving. The 12th house is giving, right? Giving compassion, giving understanding, giving chill time, right? Mercury is the mind on friends and environment and how you're being creative in your environment with your friends, with your relationships, how you're being compassionate, how you're giving love to others, how you're giving understanding to others. Sorry.
but how you give an understanding to others. Part of fortune is sitting in the seventh house with Chiron, right? And Eris, Cupid. Eris is Cupid, the fire, the fire angel. Boop, and you go to how you fall in love real quick to somebody, right? And so uh, Eris is 23 degrees in the seventh house, relationships, of relationships, marriage, connections. Chiron is in the seventh house of, in this one degree right, which is the leadership degree, taking the initiative, the role in your life to be able to heal, right, in this retrograde, inward, inner healing, inner healing, inner expression in your relationships, healing in relationships, or how you have done things in relationships that might have uh, put your relationship at a standstill, or put your relationships at a standstill, because sometimes we can have a way of thinking that might not be progressive for what we're trying to accomplish, right? Okay, so part of fortune is also here. And like I said, the part of fortune is about that potluck at the end of the rainbow, right? The treasure at the end of the rainbow in your house of relationships. So Cupid, the part of fortune, your emotional happiness and Chiron healing in relationships are in the house of relationships and marriage. So I do see some healing going on within the relationship environment. People that have been fighting or arguing a lot lately, y'all may come to a compromise. It might not be time for all that arguing no more. It might be time to notice the great things about your environment and your relationship, because you gotta understand, it is time to work together in relationships. This is what we're headed towards. We're headed towards unity. I don't care what anybody thinks or understands. They're like, oh, the world's going to shit, it's going to hell, no. It is going to shits and hell, but it's going to shits and hell to come out to a better, better place, right? It's not just going to be shits and hells forever. It's coming to a place of unity, but you got to go through that turmoil, through that struggle and through that strife to get to unity, right? If you're not arguing in a relationship, you don't understand how you're hurting somebody. You don't understand how you're hurting yourself. You don't understand how you're hurting the people around you that are involved, like your children. You know what I mean? You, it just makes you selfish. Leo, right? Mercury and Leo is all about that. Expressing yourself. But watch how selfish you might be within expression, within self-expression, right? Free yourself from those limitations. Uranus, trying Saturn. That's why that beautiful aspect is there to help you. Moon is conjunct Neptune. Your dreams are available. So now we get to talk about the moon too, because we just had, we just had a full moon in Pisces, right? Just yesterday, Sunday, uh, we had one at 726, I think it was three degrees in Pisces. And so, this was all the lead up for this because I didn't just want to bring the moon in here. I wanted to bring these energies around this moon that was making things possible, right? Because we see the change going on in, in the fourth house, right? In Pluto, with Pluto retrograde, interchange, right? Mars is out of retrograde, so we're moving forward now. Scorpio and uh, Scorpio, Aries, and all the earth signs, because this is a trine going through all the earth signs, right? Moving forward now. Movement is happening. Blockages are breaking away. Kundalini is being hired, and you are able to express yourself more, your anger more, in a correct light. That's why Mars was retrograde, because we were learning how to express our anger in the correct light. So now here, this full moon happened in, in Pisces with Neptune, which rules Pisces, conjunct the moon. So moon conjunct Neptune. Neptune is all about your dreams. It's all about your compassion and how you offer to other people, your understanding. It's the chameleon vibes, right? Your, your ability to adapt to a circumstance, right? Um, and even if the circumstance may seem harshful or painful, or whatever the case, you have the compassion and understanding to deal with it, right? So it's like strength. It's like having the strength. Um, Pisces, it's funny, Pisces is the most sensitive sign, but I look at Pisces as actually being the most strongest sign. 
Why? Because vulnerability is the most important thing to express love, right? Let's say that one more time. To be vulnerable is the highest expression of love. So therefore, the weakest, they say the weakest sign is actually the strongest sign. For me, the Pisces is like Goliath. It's like David. I'm sorry. I said Goliath. Pisces is like David, right? David was a scrawny man. He wasn't that big, but he was the most powerful. He killed a giant with a slingshot. That's all it took. It took his brains and smarts and his wits to kill a giant with a slingshot. He could have been scared. This is why the 12th house is your secret major energy in enemies. We'll talk about all that later. Um, if y'all get into my astrology tutorials on Divinity Unleashed, y'all definitely will learn these things with the planet. But David is Pisces, right? Jesus is Pisces. Mahatma Gandhi is Pisces, even though he has some inclinations, inclinations to his background uh, about being a little racist. But that's not even a point. It's about the power and peace, right? Power and peace, right? All these uh, Thoth, everybody you got, Muhammad, you know what I mean? All these people walked in peace, but this peace was so powerful that you couldn't break them away from it. And, you, and, and it startled people because they didn't care. Even Buddha walked in peace. You know, I heard the story about Buddha um, um, walking in a forest and a man came up on him and he was, he, was, he was cussing him out and telling him who he was to teach his word, right? And this, this story is very valuable to what's going on this week. Uh, so it, it, uh, Buddha's men started getting mad. They started getting upset. And so Buddha turned around at his men and was like, chill, right? And so he looked back at the man. The man's like, who are you? You don't know who you are. The man spit on him, right? So then his men started pulling out swords and getting everything popping. They was ready to get it at, ready to get that action cracking, right? And so Buddha said to them, he was like, yeah, I can't, I can't help what this man is doing here. He's not mad at me. He's mad at himself. He's mad at what he don't understand, right? And he told his men that they were wrong for reacting. He told them they were wrong. His men that was going to defend him, he told them they were wrong for reacting because he had it, right? He had his own battle. He knew what he was doing. He didn't need nobody else to tell him what to do. He didn't need nobody else to tell him to react to a situation. He didn't need that. He could break free, which makes sense. Your reign is sitting in the eighth house of Scorpio. Break free, right? Breaking free from the triggers, from the triggers that are stopping you from being able to express love in a higher vibration, Venus and Libra. Take the gateway. Take the gateway of love. Take the middle ground. Balance this out. Stop hurting people around you, right? Be stable about your emotions. Neptune, Neptune moon gives off a soulmate contract, right? It gives off the soulmate look. So you could be, you could be figuring out that you know your soulmate now. You could be like, now I know who my soulmate is. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this serious. So you, the universe is giving you that foundation in Virgo, right? Because the moon is in Virgo's house in Pisces, <laughs> which is interesting, right? Because it's this purity. It's this, oh, my bad. But it's this purity. It's this forgiveness and understanding to others to resolve things, right? And to notice your dreams, to notice what you want to make happen. But you got to notice the people that you need to work with to make those things happen. So all in all, what I'm seeing from this energy right here, it is the energy to be creative and communicate. This is also the energy to find your soulmate, to know your soulmate, know who your soulmate is. This is also a great transit for noticing your dreams, but getting together with the right people that you need to accomplish your dreams. 
Also being serious about it, being more serious, but getting away from the, the gnomes, the, the negative goblins, right? Uh, the goblins that come and try to devour your goals and dreams and make you not believe in what you want. It is very much that time to believe in what you want. Focal point, believe what you want. Believe in your dreams. Have compassion for yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Believe in change. Believe in inner change. Adapt, let go, open up the will of fortune. So I hope you guys enjoyed your astrological reading. I think we shall stop in tarot world now. Let's see what's going on there. So what are the energies for? <laughs> see? So I didn't mean I have to keep going forward. So this is the Eight of Swords right here. And the Eight of Swords is about your fears. It's about overcoming fears. As you notice, this woman is self-trapped. This woman is self-trapped. She's not trapped by anything else by her own thinking, right? She has the passion red. She has the passion and energy to make things happen. So there is nothing fearing. There's nothing stopping her from getting things accomplished. She's even bound. If you notice the bound, the, bind, the bind on the rope are loose. They're loose at the bottom. So she can't even get out of this. So she's blindfolded herself. She's chained to herself. These swords are not even closed around her. They're in the they're they're open on the outside. She could walk right out this picture. She could walk right out this picture, but she chooses not to. See, in water here, when they say when you see water, you see life right? So there is life here possible for this person, but they have to see the greater vision, right? They have to see the greater vision. They have people looking after them. They have people looking at them. They just need a new view of how they see things, how these things are presented. Your shadow card for this reading is the devil, right? Saturn retrograde, the devil inside of you. Being noticed, being learned, being seen, the shadow side is being faced, right? The darkness, the darkness is setting its tone and the darkness needs faith, right? This is about your commitment, what you're committed to, what you're bound to, what you are expressing, what's fearing you, what's stopping you. Are you worried about money more than you're worried about love? Because love is what manifests. Money is just uh, 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 energy for love to manifest through. You know what I mean? And some people look at it the other way. This is why the pinnacle is reversed on the devil. And so we have the Ace of Swords here. And the Ace of Swords is all about that mental clarity, right? This is about the opportunity to take your mind on a journey, to see things in a different perspective, to not see them in the dark, to be more visual, to be more understanding, to not be afraid of the dark, right? Cutting through the illusion, taking one of these swords, right, in this card, and the devil, and using the sword of intellect to be able to walk through. If you notice here, check it out, check it out, check it out. We have the Ten of Swords here. And the Ten of Swords is about the darkness coming to clearness, right? And so this is about these dark times that we've been going through recently. We've been going through a lot of those, right? Um, uh, and just understanding the shadow side and the dark side. So I call this card the Dark Night of the Soul card, right? And look it up. It's a very important thing that not a lot of people go through. But we can go through this as a collective, right? And we can go through this individually. Mother Teresa actually talks a lot about the dark night of the soul, right? And it's like coming through the dark clouds of your shadow, facing your shadow, having that fight. I don't know if you've seen the video, just to keep it up with the New Agers, um, Usher's video, Looking for Myself. And in, in the video, he's fighting the shadow side. And he's having this battle, this duel, because he doesn't, he doesn't want to be that side anymore. That side was untamed. It was, the, it was the side that didn't care. 
you know what I mean? And involved itself and stuff. And then later on would be like, dang, why did I put myself in this situation? This didn't really help me. This wasn't beneficial to me. So it's about the situations that are not beneficial to you that you want to take yourself out of that you need to learn how to express yourself more, mental expression. So SWORD's all about it, expression and communication. So learning how to express yourself in a more vibrant way, right? Leo Mercury, learning how to express yourself in a more vibrant way that people can be more understanding and also not coming from a place of guilt, you know what I mean? Or misunderstanding doesn't mean it's just the innocence, right? It's the innocence that's being taken care of in a situation. So the guilt, the, 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 your root chakra, this is a perfect time to be clearing out your root chakra from old guilt or things that hurt you or hurt other people around you or things that you've hurt people from. This is very root energy. So your root chakra is a very, it's the color red. It's, it's, it rules your genital auras, the sex organs, you know, what you hold on to, your grudges, things like that. Pisces moon energy is all about forgiveness. It's about forgiving and letting go. It's the judgment card, right? Boom. Next card I came up with is temperance. Temperance is balancing your inner iniquities out and finding the purity within you. Very much Virgo season, right? Virgo is all about purifying. You think that they're just critical to be critical? No, they're not. They're critical because they're trying to help you purify yourself. They want you to clean up that energy that you're holding on to or using that is not resourceful for you. Virgo is earth, resources, tools, tools used to purify yourself, to gain that harvest. Virgo is harvest, gaining the harvest, the harvest from working hard on your emotions, on your mental clarity. Virgo is about mental clarity. So clarifying your mental, cleaning out your mental closet. This is why we have the uh, sun in the 12th house opposing this moon, cleaning out your spiritual and mental closet, making room for new things for the future. Boom! I hope that one was clear for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I really appreciate the love, support, and warmth, and it will keep coming. This is Aquarius Roberts back at it again. You guys have.